Hi guys, so I'm afraid I've got some bad news. My mature male Pachypoma smithy that I've got in my collection has passed away. You can see his abdomen there is all shriveled up and he was a mature male so it wasn't expected for him to last too much longer. I just noticed today that he was all curled up in his enclosure and he had in fact passed away. So yeah, this video is going to be about what I do with tarantulas once they have died in my collection. And usually if it's only a small spiderling, or if it's usually started to uh, smell pretty bad and decompose, then I will just usually throw them out. But larger specimens like this one do look pretty impressive. And especially mature males, they uh, dry out pretty quickly because they do only have small abdomens and what I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to donate him to my local university and they will probably dry him out to preserve him and he'll be used to uh, help educate some of the students so yeah I did actually have another male pass away this was last year uh, back in December this was actually an immature male though so he hadn't quite matured and I donated him to the university and like I said they dried him out and they pinned him he's got a little name tag down there it's the wrong way around though, let's uh, turn it around so yeah this was my Pamphibetia species Ecuador 2 and yeah he's actually preserved pretty well as you can see he's still got the nice markings on the carapace and it's a bit hard to pick up on the camera but he has still got that purplish tinge to the femurs of the legs so yeah still a great looking spider even though he's uh, no longer with us so yeah I think it's good to try and promote the hobby in any way that you can and uh, by donating these to the university then a lot more people will get to see them up close than if I just kept them for myself and especially this mature male because he has got quite a few interesting characteristics of course being a mature male he has the bulbous pedipalps which the females don't have and they of course are used for injecting the sperm as well as storing it after he's made his sperm web and also there's the tibial hooks on the first pair of legs can't really see those at the moment I'll try to get a better angle in a minute but the other interesting thing is as you probably noticed he has got a leg missing that's because he was attacked by one of the females in one of the mating attempts and this will actually show people that they can survive pretty happily with a leg missing and also if a leg is grabbed then they do have the ability to release it at the base and then it heals over pretty quickly so yeah, uh, I think I'll try and show you the tibial hooks next. So if I just lift up his leg, then we should be able to see the tibial hook. There you go, you can just see it there. Pretty decent shot. And yeah, these have... And yeah, as you probably know, these are used to uh, get the female in the right position. He will actually hook the female's fangs and then push his legs to help lift her up because the female does need to be pretty much vertical so he can get into the right position to deposit his sperm I'm sure this guy will uh, fascinate quite a few people and his new home will be the University of Derby so yeah I'm pretty sure they want to keep him as a whole specimen and dry him out because he's quite impressive and is a very beautiful species as well but uh, if they wanted to they could also take some nice photographs of him under the electron microscope get some pretty cool close-ups but of course it's completely up to them what they want to do with him so yeah anyway guys just wanted to put in that out as another option for you if you do have a university close to you or maybe a big school that will have better equipment than you would to preserve it Anyway guys, that's about it for this video, 
I know it's been a bit of a grim topic, but uh, this is part of the hobby, I'm afraid. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I shall see you again soon.